Thank you, Member. Very quickly, I just want to take one last uh, swipe at this. Uh, but last Congress, this subcommittee held a similar hearing um, for the reauthorization on brownfield programs where questions on the potential Superfund liability for local governments that acquire brownfields property was also raised. In response to the question, for the record, EPA testified that Section 101, parentheses 20D, of Superfund law provides a specific statutory exemption for properties involuntarily acquired by local governments through bankruptcy, tax delinquency, abandonment, or other circumstances in which the government involuntarily acquires title by virtue of its function as a sovereign. Uh, I ask unanimous consent that uh, there are four different uh, uh, um, titles that uh, EPA circular liability and local government acquisition and other activities. Guidance of 2011 on this issue be made part of the record. Without objection. There you go. For properties that are acquired by local government voluntarily the Superfund law treats these parties the same as any other bona fide prospective purchaser and requires the same level of due care with respect to hazardous substances at the property. Since the statute seems pretty clear in this and provides a pathway for local governments to redevelop properties and acquired both voluntarily and uh, involuntary, uh, how would you have the proposed changes for municipal liability differ? Congresswoman, uh, on those exemptions, there's eminent domain and tax liens. The, the exemptions are not covered. So if we're going to change it, we would want to make sure that municipalities and or counties that go through an eminent domain process or acquire the property through tax liens, that the exemption is in place. Anybody else? Um, I would just add that, you know, a, a lot of the property that uh, my colleagues around this country have uh, acquired uh, through involuntary actions have become voluntary, working with the state EPA and the federal EPA saying this has become a hazard on our community and we need to step in to remediate it, working every step of the way, having that indemnification and working with um, uh, the Environmental Protection Agency to support that local government is, is, would be highly important. That's it? Well, and then uh, if, if it's voluntary, then would there be a different way of looking at it? Well, I would just say, um, uh, Congresswoman Napolitano, even properties that we acquire through tax delinquencies, uh, one of the examples has been often cited in the law and often presumed to be protected. Um, may not necessarily be exempt if local governments took it affirmatively or voluntary by that through that tax delinquency process. That's always a risk to a local government and, and some, one of the reasons that, or the impediment to cleaning up that property as well. All right. Uh, well, the, uh, the EPA guidance <coughs> that was submitted for the record, <coughs> excuse me, is, uh, includes the third-party lender liability and the low-risk petroleum sites. So that would be part of the record to, to show uh, that this is covered. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.